Okay, I told you we were just going to dive right in. <laughs> you, you meant literally. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah there's so, no hey, it's Will Terry, and there's... we're here with Iris. And I'd like to say hi to all the Terrians out there. We're going to have a great <laughs> podcast today. We're going to talk about self publishing. You know, that's what I was <laughs> expecting, Will. Yeah. You know what? We could do whatever we want. This is this is the Grown coolest man. thing about uh, where technology has taken us is there's no producer. There's, right. You know what I mean? There's right. no there's no rules. We just just do what you want. So are I you telling it. me I can take my pants off? You probably already have them off. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> Fact. Oh man, I love hanging out with you. So you guys that are watching or listening um you know tyrus and i we we hang out on skype from time to time and we talk about all kinds of different things and if you've been following my youtube channel you know that we've talked a couple times before on here and um i i love talking to people that are really comfortable in front of the camera and that are also very knowledgeable and um that can give a good uh a lot of insight and this was a topic you know, should illustrators create self-published books is kind of the, the title of the, of the video. Um, there's a lot of nuance to it. I've uh, been asked this question by a lot of people. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that, that you, Tyrus, uh, have some experience with this. And we haven't really talked in depth about your experience. So I'm, I'm going to learn a lot uh, along with everybody else uh, on this video. So let's just let's just see where it takes us. And if we go down into rabbit holes, I'm sure that uh, right now the, the people that are listening slash watching probably more listening than watching are they're drawing, they're working on their assignments. They're working on uh, st something for fun. They're working on, you know, a book project or something. So uh, we're just hanging out. It's like a big hangout them, us. And right now we've got, some people watching looks like we got about 20 people on youtube so thanks uh for, for being up late with it late here in the u.s and uh probably in the middle of the night or early morning over in europe i'm thinking probably early morning well if you have a, a link to this you can send it to me and i'll drop it too so we can get is some it, more is it, the, is it the same one that i sent you it's not the same one no that will allow people to join us will wow. So right. oh, we you don't, don't want to that. do that one, but I think it's uh, the YouTube page. Maybe, yeah. If you can see it on your YouTube page, then that will uh, solve the problem. Oh boy! Don't now worry about it. To... Don't worry about it. We're all oh, right. No, I'm freaking out. I was, I was, I wasn't nervous, but now it's like. No, listen. I just got an email. Will Terry is live. You just, oh, you illustrator did. Where'd you get up, that? So, in my in my inbox. Oh, so you can use that link. I got it. We're good to go. I don't know what I'm doing. Clearly, Will, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm still going to do this. You're an expert on all things. You don't have to. Do this <laughs> well, I hope you guys can hear us pretty good. We're gonna we're gonna talk uh, tonight about self published books and the ins and outs and all that kind of good stuff. And so we don't have any idea how long this is gonna take us, but we're just gonna try to get through stuff. Um, I, I've done this before and there's questions that populated on the side and I think I enabled that, but I am not seeing that right now. And, and like I did one of these before and then all these questions I saw had been asked during the broadcast and I apologize if anybody's asking, because I just don't see a place to, oh wait, what's this? Um, no? and maybe it's the pop out on the left, but that's okay. Maybe you can figure that out while I'm talking. Oh, wait, wait. So, There's the chat right there. You got it? Yeah. Um, but I don't see anybody. Hey, if you're, if you're watching this, ask a question if you can. And if you can't, <laughs> I'll just figure you can't because maybe I didn't set something up right. But um, anyway, this is, this is meant for, you know, just kind of us to, to do this and then people can, if they can't ask a question here, they can ask it in the in the um, comments later on. So, okay, let's get all going. Right. Man. All right, all right. So, where okay. do you want to start? What, what's well, what, let talking? me read some of these uh, letters because I got a couple letters. Uh, one from uh, Mirka and another one from Lily, and they're both along the 
those lines. So if you want to, let me read, let me read Lily's first um, and then I'll get to her. So she says, um, let's see. Um, she, she's talking about self-publishing books. And she says, what if an author asks us to make a Kindle version of a book, should we charge for it? If so, how much, what is the best size to make? So that might be something we get into later on. Um, and then she asks in number two, her second question, she asked the same thing as uh, Mirka. So I'm going to skip that one. And then the third one about the contract, I usually receive a contract from authors and sign it. What if an author asks an illustrator to send him or her a contract? Can we just send a copy of contracts that we had before to them? Can we make changes to that contract before sending? So basically contract questions. I don't know if you want to get into that first, but basically in talking about self-publishing, I think, I think that one of the biggest questions is how do you facilitate that? Like if, if an author comes to you and asks you, Hey, do you want to illustrate a book? Um, where does that go from there? And you do this, you've done this a bunch of times, right? Probably over 20. So, right. yeah, I, I knew you had. And so, so tell me, why don't you tell me? Cause I think you'll probably end up answering her questions. Let's say I am an author and I email you and I say, Tyrus, I love the, your work on this book and this book and this book. And I've got this story and I would want you to be my illustrator. Go. Sure. So <clears throat> when you get those emails or, or those conversations in person, the first thing you want to do is set the pace, the tone. What is it that they're looking for and what is it that you're willing to give? Meaning, do they want 500 pages for $200? Right. Or are they looking for you to do something for free or simply based on royalties, right? You, <clears throat> Before you do anything else, you want to be clear on what it is they're looking for. So as an independent illustrator, if you're not working for a publisher or you're not working for a company, you want to know what it is that they want in the very beginning so that you don't waste time. You'd rather have a conversation stop early than to spend two or three weeks going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then hear this, oh, uh, you know, say, so, well, look, this is how much it's going to cost you. And they say, oh, I was thinking that it would cost me, for example, let's say you say it's going to cost $6,000 for me to produce this for you. Well, so that's, and, a th that's a question I have is like, do you, do you fire back with a qualifying question to kind of weed them out? Sure, absolutely. I've learned in the 20 so odd, so 20 so, in the 20 some odd books that I've created is that you want to get down to what it is they're looking for. Do they have an idea budget? Um, you want to do that very quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's within a price range you're willing to negotiate with, then it's great. You continue to talk. If someone, I, I just had this email slash conversation this weekend where someone told me uh, they were looking to produce their own book. Um, they wanted to be an independent author and work with an independent artist mm -hmm. and that they wanted full control. Great. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a vanity project. Sometimes, sometimes it's an actual, uh, very successful project. And she says, the last artist I was working with, they completed the book, but I wasn't very happy. Now, here's the kicker. So I said, well, what was your budget for the last project? She said to me, $200. Mm. <laughs> Breaks, right? Right away, this is probably not someone I'm going to work with. Not right. because it's a bad person, but she has in this case, unrealistic expectations for budget. That's absolutely unrealistic. That's not going right. to come anywhere near what I'm going to ask for. And I'm no, there's no way I'm going to negotiate her up to it. Right. You know, she right. has an idea. Now, what I didn't say to her is like, what you're asking for is unrealistic to have a book produce, especially if you want it done well and you want it to be marketable, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those are the conversations I need to have right away. If I can get to that in the first 15 minutes and the person says, oh, okay, sorry, I'm not interested, or I'll get back to you, and oftentimes the answer is, I'll talk to you later, I'll get back in touch with you, let me do a little more research, you probably won't hear from them again, and that's okay too. Um, but at least you're not wasting time, because if you do this full-time for a living independently, you cannot waste time. You can't spend days and weeks emails going back and forth. And by the way, this is important, so I'm going to like break it down so people yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. It may seem like it's not that big of a deal to send emails back and forth, talk to people, text people, but it actually, it's a bigger deal than you think. One, 
you could be putting that energy and time into someone else or something else too. It sets the tone and you get in the habit of spending days playing patty cake with potential clients as opposed to saying, look, it's not going to work. Let me move on to someone else. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you'll have five emails in a day. Other times you may have one a week. The goal is to get through those emails and find out who really wants to work with you so you can see what the project is about. If you want to work on the project, does the timeline make sense? Does the budget make sense? As opposed to dancing with five people for two weeks. Mm -hmm. It's just ultimately becomes a waste of time. So I know for most people, it's hard to get to the point because no one likes no's unless you've learned to like no's, right? <laughs> no one, you know, the idea of someone wants to work with you, they love your art. Oh, by the way, every conversation starts off with how much they love your art. If they see your artwork, flattery, right? <laughs> That's a part of the game. Yeah. Then, you know, if you're caught off guard, you know, you can kind of like start dancing around a subject. And before you know it, it's two weeks of emails going back and forth or mm -hmm. an hour on the phone, you know, whatever. So you have to get to the place where you can say, look, this is the budget that I usually work with. Um, it ranges between this amount and that amount. Um, what are you looking to do? What are you looking to spend? What do you have in mind? What is your budget? Can I, can I break in sure. and ask you a sure. question? Sure, sure, so sure. Um, with that budget in mind, are you, do you normally do a 32 page book? I mean, is that pretty standard for you? Yes, for the most part. Yes, for okay. the most part. So you're so you've already did you've already calculated and determined about how much you need to get for a 32 because you kind of other than subject matter, it's kind of a, a fixed amount of work. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you want to have some idea um of what your time is worth, right? So going back to what I was saying, the reason why you want to talk about the money up front, well, for example. There's an artist out who said they could complete a book for $200. If you just simply break down what an average is, so if you say a page a day or a page and a half a day or half a page a day, they're making less than $3 a day on a book. Right. Right. That's completely crazy, unrealistic, unprofessional, and foolish. Okay. So on the other end, I have to know what I need to make per day to run a business, to be successful, to be able to pay the bills to keep the lights on, right? To save or whatever my goals are. So I, I go into negotiate negotiation saying, this is the amount that I need. I cannot take less than this. And if I make more than this, great. So any artist who wants to do this should have their own price list ready to go. So <clears throat> when you're negotiating with the price, you already know what you're willing to take and what you aren't willing to take. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so, so go kind of moving beyond that and going to, so you're talking about talking uh, uh, about some of the parameters of the job, and you're you're trying to get comfortable with this person. They're they've already decided that hopefully they like you. And by the way, one of my red flags for someone asking me to to do a book with them, um, I I haven't done one with a uh, with someone contacting me like that, a, a stranger, but I, I get those inquiries a lot. And one of the biggest red flags, and I'm sure you get this too, which is, um, Hey, will you basically, it, it's something like, will you do this book? And, but if, if not, um, can you send me a list of other people that could, you know, which is to me and that, to me, that's a red flag because they're not saying I picked you because I think you're going to be perfect. It's almost like anybody will do like, almost like, you know, like you're calling someone to, to fix a leaky faucet and it's like, well, if, you know, if you can't do it, uh, you know, is, uh, any plumber is going to do, you know, and really art shouldn't be treated that way. So it's a red flag. You know, uh, I, I, I agree with you 100%. And so, you know, usually what happens initially is you'll hear they love your work. I really like this book that you worked on. Or they'll say, I love your work. And I'll say, which books have you seen? Right. Or where have you seen my work? And they'll tell me. But if the response is, well, I'm talking to a bunch of different artists. Mm, mm -hmm. I'm not really going to invest too much time in this person because uh, it's one of those things where like, look, if you really believe in a story and you believe you found the right artist, you're willing to make it happen, right? Right. The people who do that tend to do really well. So one of my uh, biggest books, Penny and the Magic Puffball, uh, the author, Alanda, she's a great lady, 
one of my one of my favorite people in the world. She reaches out to me. She didn't know me, and she says, "You're the guy for the book." She starts off that way, and she continues to talk that way. So even when we're negotiating the price, she's saying, "You're the guy for the book. Help me make it happen." I don't have a lot of money, but I have enough. What can we do? How can we negotiate? Now, once we have that, once you you know she believes in me and she thinks I'm the person, and it's up to me to shut it down. Now, as an artist, I'm listening a little bit more, right? Now I know, okay, let me hear the story. Is this something I believe in? Do I believe that I can make this book a success? And even if I don't make all the money that I'd like to make, will this book be a calling card for me? And in this case, in my case, it was. So oftentimes people will reach out and I'll get an email to say, oh, I saw your book, Penny and the Magic Puff Balls. I love it. It's great art. It's what I'm looking for. Can you can you work with me? Right. So it's worth it to negotiate a rate in that case. If the book is great, the person really wants you. But let's flip that coin. If someone just said any artist will do, eh, my response is a lot different. Right. Now I know you're not you're not vested in me. You're just looking for an artist that will fit, uh, that will do the work you want them to do for the price you want them to work for. Right. And yeah, I'm, I agree with you 100%. That's definitely a red sign. Definitely. Red so, flag. So you mentioned um, that this this woman, I can't remember her name, that worked with you on that book. Oh, her name, Alanda. 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 Yeah. Sure. So she, she, you know, you could tell by the way she was talking, the email back and forth, that the project was really important to her and then yeah. you said so that's 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 a really good sign but then you also were able to she's saying well how can you help me make this work money wise because i don't have a lot so what are some things that you can do or you know like what how does where does the conversation go from there like you know if, if if her if her offer isn't quite as high as you need it to be do you do you cut I wouldn't, I don't want to say cut corners, but do you modify the project to where instead of maybe full page spreads with backgrounds, you do more spot illustrations or something like that? Like what? Sure. And, and, and those are the things you, those are the tools you can use to negotiate where you say, okay, I can do it, but maybe it won't be as pretty as this book or it won't have as much detail. Or I want to take, you know, not shortcuts, but different styles of art mm -hmm. to, to accomplish the goals, right. To finish mm -hmm. the mission. So yeah. you can do that, or you can do things like this. Well, once the books are produced, I'd like a certain amount of copies. Mm. Now, here's why that makes sense, especially if you're an illustrator, if you're new, you're independent. It allows you to get out, go to book signings, to go to comic book conventions, to go to all types of conventions, and sit there and have a product in front of you, and you can advertise yourself as an illustrator. So, Will, you know, you go to these conventions, they clearly help build your brand, right? You have a reason to be there. You you have a product in hand, and it allows people to see your work. You can talk to people, meet people, meet other artists. So without that, you're just some person behind a computer. Right. No one ever gets to see your face. People don't get to connect with you and say, oh, this guy's got a great sense of humor, you know, or I like his personality. I'd like to work with They miss that. And so maybe at the beginning you negotiate, hey, man, look, let me get. 500 copies for free you pay for them later on and maybe we ship them you ship 50 every three months or something like that right so now you have capital it's just not cash you right. have currency it's just not cash and now you can use it for other things and you can give books away too so uh you know you can give books away so people can hold your product in hand and say oh i really like the style or, i really like his books and now you're building a customer base or you yeah. can do things like just have people sign up so there's a lot of things you can do if you don't get the money uh, up front, if the person doesn't have the money, but you believe in the project, just like any other project, mm -hmm. you can work with them. Now, I will advise against this. I'm going to jump ahead and say, when you're working independently, it's hard to track royalties. Right. And well, it becomes before, a, before so, you go there, can I insert sure. one thing? Because that's, really, that's a really good point to bring up is the royalty thing. And I had that on my list. Um, but along with what you were saying, getting those books as part of your negotiation, if they, you know, if they have less money, then you can, you know, you can ask for, well, then I need, I, I need you. I mean, I, I'm assuming that they're footing the bill because they contacted you. 
-hmm. So they're paying for this book to be self-published. They're paying for basically books to be delivered to theoretically to their house. Um, and so I, I, the re the thing I wanted to insert there is just so people know, um, if, if they, if, if you order a thousand to 2000 books, you can often get your unit price down to two or $3. So where a children's book might sell for 15 or $20 in the store, just know that the publisher is often getting, in some cases they're getting books for a dollar 50 or, or so, um, which is their, their, now that's just the printer cost. That's not their graphic designer and not their staff and all that. So the, the cost is higher in a big publisher, but as a small team, like an author illustrator, uh, sometimes that price can be pretty low. So when you're asking for, if you ask for a few hundred books, like let's say, let's just throw some numbers. Let's say they have $5,000 and you wanted seven. And so you say, Mm, but I'm okay. Well, I'll do it, but you need to give me 200 books. You're only really asking for like four or 500 bucks. Right. Extra right. in books. Right. And if you think about it, so let's say, and this becomes a good deal for them. This is actually a selling point for you as an artist, right? You say, look, mm -hmm. give me 500 books. But if you take those 500 books and you sell them at $10 each, voila. Yeah. Right. So right. you can make the money back later on on the tail end so it's kind of a royalty approach but it's not royalty it's right uh and you're right that's right if you order in bulk and this is something you know i sell to my clients all the time look we could do it this way and you're going to pay about four dollars per book but if you do it this way and i have a list of printers that i say here are my printers here, here are the guys that i like to work with i've tested them i've seen their product it's pretty good you can get a book for about 150 a dollar 50 right mm -hmm. or a dollar 25 and if you order 3,000, it's really cost effective. So then you make the order for 3,500, you save money. And I do the math for them right there. I show oh, them. Okay, cool. You know, I, I do the math and I show them, look, you know, you're not going to be losing out by agreeing to this. Let me show you why. Let me show you how. And oh, by the way, I'm advertising for you because when I run out of those books, I then send them to your Amazon channel or your website. Right. And I say, buy from this person. Right. So it's a win-win for both parties. Right. And there's the off chance that a, a larger pub publisher will see the book, love it. And the more of those books that get out there, it, there's more, ch there's more little seeds going out there. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Yeah. That, so that's for, great. I didn't yeah. know you would, you know, that you would do that. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a really good idea to right. do the math yeah. for them. Yeah. And now, now, for example, Penny is in Walmart. So it's selling in Walmart. Well, so that deal that I made, that was my first independent book. Uh, I did another one in Canada, but I don't count that. But <laughs> that's my first independent book that I worked with an author outside of Disney or anything like that. Um, the deal works out really well for me now, even now. So it's four years later, I guess. And it still works out well for me because I think about less than a year ago, once the book got into Walmart, more and more people can see it. So you have to think in terms of that. If you believe in the book, if you think it's a great book, right? It's a great idea. Then you make those deals. You say, "Look, let's work together. Let's figure it out." Do you want to talk about how it actually got into Walmart? Because I mean, like that's a pretty interesting thing. I would think. I mean, sure, sure, sure. Um, oh, I can see in the live chat now. <laughs> People are asking you questions. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, in, I can see it. Where do you see on it? a YouTube channel? If you go oh, to YouTube, you can see it. My YouTube. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you could do it on another screen, but okay. Um, as far as Walmart, so the first thing they're going to be concerned with are your numbers independently. How are your books selling? If your book's selling well, then they'll consider bringing it in. They have a review team that reviews the book. And then if they think it's, you know, it works with their brand and what they feel comfortable selling, mm -hmm. they may invite you to become a, a member and sell your books through Walmart. Hmm. So they, they have a certain amount of books that they do independently. Uh, that they bring in per year and so if they happen to be interested in you you have an opportunity to get into walmart cool i can't find it <laughs> that's okay don't worry about it so so uh san loop group <laughs> san loop group i think that's how you said had a question so what if they end up not printing the book uh if there's that's a short money one. but love we, that question before we get there let's go contracts because okay. we started with we, we need to hit contracts, but you, you well, got let's go back. To, I'm going to forget this question okay. and it's scrolling. So it's moving. So oh, okay. let me go, ahead. go ahead and answer. Yeah, it. yeah. 
So here's a good thing. If they run out of money and they can't print the book, well, I, so look, we, I'm not saying do the book for free. I'm saying if, if uh, you're short, let's say, like Will said, let's say you're saying, I want $7,000 for a book. And they say, I only have 6,000. And you say, give me 500 copies, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the project, they don't have the money. Well, you can do one or two things. You can say, well, I'm going to print them and I'll take the cut. I'll take the loss or whatever. And then you can sell the books at whatever rate you want. Uh, you can add that to the agreement. Or you can say, write it in contract that they owe you, even if they don't print their books, they owe you 500 books. They owe you 500 copies. So now you have it in writing. It's in your contract, which we'll go to next, Will. And then you work from that. So you can go about it two different ways. Um, I try not to make enemies out of my clients. Right. You know, I don't one. start a, yeah, I don't start a book without 50% down. I, I will not start a book without 50% down. So usually if they pay 50%, they're going to want to pay the rest so they can get some type of return of their money back um, off of paying me. So I, have, I haven't run into that problem. I'm sure other people have. So that's mm -hmm. a great question. But the, but the getting the half up front is, it, that is so important. You, I mean, you can't stress that enough. And also, and that's true for whether you're working with a, a private individual or whether you're working with a company. In good faith, if if a, if a person is asking you to do work, and this is, this this goes into, this go. I'll I'll tell a, basically a really quick little story. But in sure. as a as an artist in my career, there's been probably three or four times where a friend has come to me and said. I'm starting this business. I need a logo. Will you do a logo? Now, idiot will. Well, hopefully, idiot will is is like 25 year ago. Will right? Hopefully, I'm not idiot will anymore. But back in the day, idiot will was just like, yeah, you're a friend. You know, I'm going to help you out, and I just start drawing. And I, at two of the three or four people, when I showed them the logo, <laughs> you know, I'm go. Here I am at home. You know, they're, they're like, we, we negotiated a price. They're going to pay me and everything. And then I show them the logo and they're like, oh, wow. Uh, you know, I, I kind of even forgot about this. Uh, I'm not even going to do that business now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like to them. So, so then I ended up, yeah, they ended up paying me and it wasn't much money anyway, but I, and, and, and so I ended up doing this work that I didn't get enough money for because I, because of the friend discount basically. Right. So I'm treating their project more importantly and more seriously than they are. And why? Because they didn't have any skin in the game. They didn't pay me anything up front. And, and the first thing that people do <laughs> I've come to realize when they want to start a business is they think to themselves, I am not in business until I have a logo. I don't know why. That's true. I don't know why, but they just feel like that. And they haven't done half the work they should have already done to get their business going. But boy, it's really easy to just find an artist and go, you know, 1-800-DIAL-UP, Will Terry, idiot Will Terry, and and let's get this logo going, you know? And so, and I think the same is probably true with with uh, with authors if that, that want a book. If, if they're not willing to part with a decent chunk of money, half down, a third i wouldn't go for any less than a third but but i think half is a great rule yeah. they're not serious yeah no i i always say half now if the person says look i can't give you that much right away and i ask for a significant sum so it makes sense then what i say is okay then i i contract you we write out all the rules of our agreement you pay what you can so let's say if the book was 7000 we say 3500 and then i'll say They'll say, well, I only have 2000 right now. Great. I'll take the 2000 And then you make the payments for the rest until you get to the halfway mark. I don't start the book until you've made 50% down. Right. And oh, by the way, if you walk away, I keep everything you gave me. <laughs> right? This is business. But the reality is it's business. So essentially what they would be paying for are the storyboards, the thumbnails, and the character design. Great. Right. No problem. So if they walk away and look, listen to this, it happens. It happens. People give you half down. So more than what I'm talking about. And then they, for whatever reason, they walk away. I know one lady in Canada, she got sick and I understood that. And I told her, you can come back at any time. I was still under the agreement. She hasn't come back. I can think of countless people. 
it'd be like four or five people who, for whatever reason, just, you know, before we even got started, just kind of life got a hold of them or whatever. Right. It happens. But the moment that we, the moment that you take away my time, and this is where we have to get out of the desperation mode That's right. and get into the business mode and say, the moment that we come into an agreement, whether it's for a logo, a book, a character, it doesn't matter. I want it in writing. And I tell my clients this, I make this very clear. I put everything in writing and I expect you to also. When I make an agreement, I keep my end of the bargain. I expect you to also. I don't care if you're my friend. I don't care if we work together. That's irrelevant. This is business. That's the reality. I never take it. Um, I, I don't treat it like I'm desperate because I'm not. Right. The reality is I can work on my own projects if I don't have a client, which right. I'm dying to do all the time anyway, right? Right. So if you're going to take my time up, I need 50% down. So in the logo, that's a great example. I don't do anything for free anymore at all, anything. I don't care who yeah. you are. If my mom calls and says, can I have a logo? <laughs> yes, mom. Let me give you my PayPal account. I need it within the next three days. Otherwise, we're back to zero, right? That's the reality because... When people don't have skin in the game, they don't care as much as you do. And they're so, so I can stay willing, up all night. No, go ahead. Go they're ahead. so willing to waste your time. It, it's 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 bizarre to me, but because I don't feel like I'm that person, and I, yeah. I I've never asked anybody to work for free. Um, well, well, here's why they waste our time. Here's why I want to explain this. No one knows what we do. Yeah, they think because you're an artist, it's like you sit down and you just draw something out, and voila, it's perfect. They don't understand. One, I have to sit down and figure this thing out. I have to figure out the layout, the design, the color. If the character fits, I have to design the perfect character to carry the story. I have to make sure the character is likable. I have to, you know, all these things, they don't think about that. Like some days I work 18 hours a day, right? Other days I may work 12. Mm -hmm. They don't know that unless I tell them that. And so in my contract, I explain to them, I know you want your book completed. But no one wants to complete it faster than I do because I don't get paid to take longer, right? This is me right. giving you my craftsmanship. I have to explain this to the client so that they understand. Now, they still don't fully understand, but it's my responsibility to guard my time, not theirs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to the, all the artists who are in the live chat, you know, and, and you guys ask me questions, I want to try to get back to them. So I see you guys and paying attention. I'll try to get to you. But yeah. it's our responsibilities, responsibility as artists to guard our time. It's not the clients. The client is there to get what they need to get. It's our job to protect ourselves. And I, I, I think that you're, I mean, just from knowing you and in hearing you talk, I can tell that you're really good about educating them in a firm, yet a really nice manner, a really respectful manner. But like you called me. And so we're going to play it. This, these are the rules. Now you're, you're the type of guy who could, who could beat your client up. What, right? No. no what about never. what about the small person who's not as confident? You you exude confidence. Now, I might add that you've you've trained as a fighter a bit, right? You're Marine, things like that. Maybe that's rumors. I don't know if rumors. that stuff plays into in, but you have a lot of confidence. And I, I deal with a lot of people and I and I actually get a lot of uh questions from artists who They'll tell me that they'll say like, well, you, you know, you've been doing this for a long time. You know how to talk to people. I don't, I'm, I'm not good at that. Like, what do I do? You'll starve to death. That's the reality. <laughs> I'm going to be super blunt. If, if you don't protect your business, you'll starve to death. You'll have to go get a job or you'll have to stop doing art. You can mop floors and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with mopping floors or anything else. But if you want to be an artist and you want to do this for a living and you want to make money, you have to learn to be a business person. And so what other business, do you ever go into McDonald's and say, can I get a Big Mac and fries and I'll pay you later on? No, you don't do that. <laughs> you don't say, oh, if the burger's really good, I'll pay you. You don't do that. You go in, they tell you a price and you pay for it. Yeah. And watch this, you respect them for telling you the price. That's right. Right? That's it's the reality. Too, when, you, when you teach someone how to treat you, they treat you with so much more respect. If you allow people to get away with stuff in their mind, in your mind, you think you're being nice. Well, I'll let them late, late pay me. I'll let them do this. I'll let them do that. I'll let them get away with this, that in their mind, they're like, they're going to pay everybody else in front of you. That, that, yeah. is, that is not treating them that way. Well, and, let me, let me show you what a jerk I am. I'm going to let everybody know <laughs> what, 
but I have to be. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna share a secret. In my contract, I say, if within 30 days or 15 days, depending on, on the type of project I'm doing, you don't pay me, I then own everything. You no longer have any rights, and all money paid to me belongs to me. Guess what? People tend to pay me, <laughs> right? Because the reality is, is now I own everything. That's awesome. I can easily make up a mock story. That's listen. Let's be real. Let's. I'm going to say something that's going to piss a lot of authors off. Let's. <laughs> just, all right. Here we go. Nobody comes to a basketball game to watch people dribble. They come to, sh to see threes, slam dunks, and a little bit of defense. That's us. All the glitz and glamour in the book come from us. All the characters, they don't listen. Otherwise, why are you hiring me? If your story's so great, what do you need me for? The reality is we are the show. And so if I don't act like it, they won't act like it. And yeah. sometimes they think they're the show. Now, that's an inflated way of thinking about <laughs> what I do. <laughs> but my mom said it's a sad dog that won't wag his own tail. Meaning, if you're not willing to say you're good at what you do, you believe in yourself, you are great, then you should get out of this business. Mm -hmm. If you're waiting for everybody else to pat you on the back, you'll be waiting a long time. So you have to get the courage up to believe in yourself and say, look, if you're going to hire me, you're going to pay me what I'm asking you for. Uh, if, if I'm going to work this hard, I'm going to get my worth out of it. Now, each one of us get to determine what our worth is. So I'm not going to tell anybody else what they have to charge for their artwork or what they have to charge for a book. But you have to, like I said at the very beginning, you have to determine that up front. You have to decide that up front. And then you stick with it. The moment you put that in the client's hand, game over. Game over. You don't go anywhere and not know what things cost. You, right. If you walked into a store and <laughs> you had to haggle with the guy at the register every time, how often would you go to that store? That's right. It wasn't. You say those guys are crazy. Well, your price should be the same. What you think your artwork worth is worth. So if you say I'm five hundred dollars a page, then be five hundred dollars a page. If you're fifty dollars a page, be fifty dollars per page. But you have to set your own worth. You have to believe in it. And you have to stick by it. Because now, as crazy as this sounds, everybody pay attention. If you said fifty dollars, they would say forty. <laughs> They're not going to say no, no, no. Fifty is too low. I want to give you 75. They won't do that, right? They'll right. say, how about 35? Can I give you 35? Right. And if you're not paying attention, you'll end up saying, yeah, well, maybe I'll get the money on the next book or the next book. And you'll you'll find yourself five books down the line and you'll have nothing to show for it. You know, you're working essentially for nothing. So you have to figure it out. Like we said earlier, you have to figure out your cost. You have to believe in what it is you're selling and your cost. And you have to stick by it. And... <clears throat> Out of the three or four or five last emails, I probably only have one real potential. That's okay. Because that one real potential is not going to argue with me or haggle with me over price. They're right. not going to flake out at the end. So I go with that one over the four. Have you dealt with people that try to put you on the defensive? Because I let me before you answer that, um, I've had a lot of students come to me and say, you know, I'm, I'm working on this book for my aunt, for my grandmother, for my father-in-law, for, you know, and they're making me feel bad. They're telling me, you know, I, I don't, you know, they're, they're the boss. They're the ones who run the show and I, they're not letting me give any input They're And, and I've had some, you know, where they're like, you know, you're, you're not a, they'll tell them things like, well, you're not a, I don't have to pay you professional prices because you're not really a professional, you know, things like that, where it's like, it's going above and beyond. Like when I hear the actual words they've used, I'm like, tell me exactly what they said. It's, I could tell the type of person and the type of, um, of manipulation that's going on. It's not, it goes beyond a negotiation. It goes into manipulation. You're right. So here's, and th this is what you just said. I love that you said that because sometimes people will say, well, because I didn't go through a company, you're not a professional. Who gets to determine if I'm a professional or not? Right. How you're many doing, books do I have to do? Doing How it many for money, you're a professional. Absolutely. If you want to hire me, I'm a professional, right? Right. Unless I'm really, really cheap and you're just throwing fifty dollars at me and I'm going to produce well, a book. Let's, let's be honest. There's a pecking order, and I mean, some of the and we've talked about this before. Some of the top 
illustrators out there working for the biggest, largest publishers, the big name guys, sometimes they'll get fifty to a hundred thousand dollar advance. Um, and so, but there's everything all the way down the line, and there's a lot of good eaten all the way down. You don't have to be getting those those high amounts, but you're professional all the way down to the even to the lower right. end. So yeah. Yeah. if someone my my advice is if someone's if 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 someone's trying to make you feel bad in order to get leave them alone. Yeah, it, it's just it's yeah. never gonna be and you know, we one of the one of the biggest problems as artists is especially when you're younger, uh, you, an opportunity comes by and you think, well, if I don't take this, this this could be that one big break. And having some mileage and years behind me, I would say if you're an artist, there's going to be a lot of opportunities that are going to come. And if you take the one where the person's trying to manipulate you, you're going to learn. So I mean, it's not it's not the end of the world if you end up working for that person. But I, some I, people some people learn, but it's just like a relationship. Some people continuously get in abusive relationships. That's true, right? Yeah. So the worst part about an abusive relationship is this: while you're with the person who's abusive to you, you might miss the person who will be good to you. Mm. Let's take that to what we're talking about. While you're wasting time with someone who doesn't want to pay you, doesn't really appreciate the type of artist that you are, you could be working on something that would attract a publisher's eye or an independent author who would really be head over heels for you. So you never want to waste your time on people who don't appreciate you in either front, relationship-wise, business-wise. It's never really worth it. They never, you know, they don't change their mind halfway through. They don't go, oh my gosh, you're such a hard worker. You're so great. You know, I only offered you 6,000, but let me make it 12. That's not how it goes. Right. I, my mentor tells me this. He says, if it starts off bad, it'll end bad. Yep. I, there is nothing that's been said to me more true about people than that. If it starts off bad, it'll end bad. If someone starts off disrespecting you, not appreciating you, not loving what you do, but just wants you to work for them, at the end of that relationship, it's going to be worse. Right. It'll very likely not be better. It, that's not how people work. And so if someone comes and they're you know, talking about working with you on a project and you can tell the respect is it, just I'll pass. Well, could you pass on a great idea? Yeah, of course you could. Of course you could. But sometimes it's not worth it. Let me share a story. Is that yeah, all right, yeah, Will? Yeah. Can I, yeah, let me drop a story. So I had this great job. I, I had the perfect title. It was everything that I wanted. And this place was like DreamWorks in Chicago. I mean, this place was unbelievable. And everything, everything. This was the the Tom Hanks big experience. For me, okay? <laughs> it's like that, right? <laughs> and I don't want to describe it too much because then people who follow me will know. So I don't. But I was miserable there. Every day I woke up and my stomach would hurt so bad. Why? Because they didn't value me. I just what for whatever reason, I, my personality or I, I, who knows what it was, but the point was I wasn't loved, right? So I did that for over a year and I wasn't loved. And so I remember all the other places I worked at, they were not as nice. They didn't have all the amenities, wasn't as pretty on the inside, didn't have all the amenities. Let me go back and say that again, <laughs> but they loved me. Oh, there's a difference. And so I promised myself I'd never take a job or stay at a job where they didn't love what I did. Mm. And I'd always go to places that love what I do. So at least I'd be happy working. Maybe I don't make as much money. Maybe I don't have a fancy title. I don't have a fancy office, you know, all those things. But the people are happy to see me come in in the morning. Go where you flow. Go where you flow. And if someone calls you up and wants you to work on a project and they don't love you, like we said earlier, if they don't want you, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for your time. And that's hard. I know it's scary. You know, when I say these things, people are like, oh, it's easy for you to say, but I got a bunch of mouths to feed. You know what I said? It's not like I'm right. sitting up here, you know, talking out of my butt. I, funny, I live this every day. The funny thing is, and I, I know this is, this is something that I could not have been coached into that I had to learn through experience. So it's kind of take it with, for what it is, but Man, the more that I have been firm with people and telling them, you know, like it's it's kind of like uh, oh, it's 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 that Morgan Freeman moment, right? In uh, Shawshank, remember 
He's up for parole, and he keeps getting denied. And then finally he goes, screw it. You know what? Uh, I was a bad person. I did these horrible things, and I'm not that person anymore. So if you want to if you want to keep me here, whatever, you're going to do what you're going to do. But I'm not that person anymore, and I know who I am. And it was it was a great speech, and they go approved, right? And he mm-hmm. and he gets paroled. And it, when you become that person, when you become the person who says, you know what, this is how I work, this is how I want to be treated, this is how I expect you to treat me, this is what I'm going to do for you. I am really passionate about what I'm doing, and I know that I can make your book amazing. But you're not going, I'm not going to allow you to do this, 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 and this. It's like, I mean, think about that from the other from the other side, from the author's side. They're like, wow, I got somebody here who's not like the other two people I interviewed who were really thirsty. Wishy, thirsty, thirsty and wishy-washy. Yeah. I've yeah. got somebody here who knows who they are yeah. and who's going to, I mean, it sounds great to have somebody that's, that you're working with that's confident. So uh, I don't know how to get that. Uh, I don't know how to manufacture that other than, for me, it took a lot of miles. So I don't know. And, and you make a good point. And it goes back to, let me give another example, another true story, right? So I have all these friends. I was in the video game industry for a very long time. And it life just wasn't as easy for me as it was for them. And I realized something in the process of trying to be like this great video game character artist and da 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 you know. I, one of my great friends, he's, he's a big game guy. He does all the character work. And so whatever steps he took, I would always take. Whatever projects he worked on, I would always try to create my own projects. But I realized I'd always be a number two to his number one. He'd always be one step ahead of me. I'd always be one step behind. There is no way to ever catch up to him because I'm only following his footsteps. Mm. But if I blaze my own path and I become the best artist I can be, then it changes everything. So when I do that, now I have confidence to say, look, if you want Kadir Nelson, go hire Kadir Nelson. Kadir Nelson is Kadir Nelson. I cannot be him. But I could be a really good Tyrus Gauche. As a matter of fact, I can do that in my sleep. I don't <laughs> have to think about it. I don't have to guess. And all of a sudden, you'll have this unique confidence in who you are because you're not trying to be someone else. You're not pretending. Right. Right. <laughs> Hey, Matt, this is the deal. This is me. I am who I am. It is what it is. Take me or leave me. And I understand if I'm not for you, it's just me, man. And you're, and you're happy if they walk away after you've given them that, that talk. Then you realize it. we weren't a good fit and it wouldn't have worked to force it. That's right. That's right. And so I tell people things like this. Here, I, I'm just giving away all of my secrets to a happy, <laughs> to a happy life as an artist. You don't even get to pick the characters. I tell you what the characters. That was another thing I was going to ask you. So, before you go, I want you to go into that. But also, do you send? I make. I got to make sure we cover this. Do you send them a contract, or do they send you a contract? You send them. Daddy Daddy sends the contracts. (laughs) Daddy sends the contracts. There's just one client who, she, you know, I I I spoil her riding. She spoils me riding. So, and she was my first real deal so for her she started off sending me a contract i allow her every book we do together she can send a contract contracts pretty much the same the price point changes the delivery date changes and that's it right but outside of that new new new, new. so i get to pick the contract will you ever sign two contracts like if they're like well i've got a contract and i insist on using mine and you're like well but i have probably not probably not here's why they don't know what they're doing <laughs> right. No, it's so true. Like you it, work you with know, more people than they have. Yeah. Well, you know, I often say this. Listen, when it comes to this part, I'm the expert, and you aren't. You, you're the writer. You're the author. Okay. You specialize in that. I specialize in producing books for independent people. Right. So let me do my job, and you do your job, and let's do our jobs well. Now, that's the approach that I take, and I know it sounds like I'm the biggest jerk in the world. No, it just sounds like you're really confident. But only because I've tried it the other way. Right. And people are wishy-washy. You know, they don't even know how to make contracts. Right. Sometimes if you say, okay, you send me a contract, 
you can wait four months for a contract to arrive because they don't know how to produce a contract. Right. And it's that thing that's in the back burner where they're like, oh, I got to do that, but they don't want to do it because they don't know how. So then um, the, you feel free to say no. <laughs> do you share your contract? With, with who? With with people that like other illustrators who might want to. Look I don't up. I don't curse, but hell no. <laughs> I don't share my are, you, are you kidding me? Listen, I'm giving away too much sauce as it is right, right now. All right, all right, all right. I do not share checking. my contract, this but like a... but I, I do give advice. Like, so if some artist wanted to ask me a question, and or the, or someone sent them a contract and they had a specific line to say, I'm worried about this, I'll give my opinion. But I'm not a lawyer. So that's right. another reason why I don't share contracts. So I had I paid for a contract, and then I can just adjust it. I can adjust the price. Okay. And so name. that's a good, yeah. So that's a good thing. So you did you contact a lawyer to start? Yeah, off? you could do it a couple of different ways. There's services online that you can buy contracts for, or you can hire a lawyer mm -hmm. and say, "I want one master contract," and you want to adjust from there. Okay. Um, that's probably the best way to do it because you don't want to buy a new contract every time. Uh, it, it becomes time consuming. You spend too much money. Right. It's too much energy on things that don't Well, matter. even the publishers don't use a different, they use the same contract. That's right. Probably. That's right. So then do you, as you learn these lessons, because you've got a lot of, you've got some scrapes and bumps and bruises. So do you go back to the attorney and say, this is a problem I have, and I want you to add something to the effect of this, or do you add that yourself? So I would add it myself because okay. it's a contract between two parties, right? So once they sign and agree, I'm pretty confident that if I had to go to court, I can say, look, this was clear. It was right here. It was in writing. And this person agreed to it. They would have to prove that I somehow falsified the contract. I have procedures in place to make sure that that doesn't happen mm -hmm. and that I wasn't honest and earnest in what I was doing. It then falls on their case. As a matter of fact, I'll give everybody an inside scoop on this. So, I mean, I give you my contract, but I want to hook you guys up. The Tarians get a, get a little insight. <laughs> if you accept payment through PayPal, and there's an argument, PayPal will take uh, the contract, they will review the contract, and they will decide based on the contract for you. So if a client says, I don't want to pay you because you didn't deliver the work, you can go to PayPal and say, hey, this person still owes me the money. I delivered the work and they didn't pay and they will argue it for you. They will look at the contract and wow. say, yes, this person, and they will take the money or shut the person's account down. Now wow. I've only had to do that twice in five years. Um, I don't think the procedures change much, but I like using PayPal and I tell the clients, if you feel like I didn't deliver the work, you can go to PayPal. They have a, and they're small print and they're fine print. They talk about this stuff. Interesting. Yeah, man, man. You, you have pearls. This is good stuff, man. Every now and then, I'm useful. Well, <laughs> uh, that's why you keep me on your friends list. <laughs> this is true. Okay, so you send the contract, mm -hmm. they sign it. Do you send them a copy afterwards? Because I, you know, people are very detail oriented, and of course, questions. of course. So I, I like everything done digitally. Uh, and I'll give you guys another little insider. Adobe has a program where you can send a PDF, people can sign it, and it logs when they open it and when they sign it for you. So this way, I don't have a fancy secretary. I keep trying to convince a certain lady <laughs> to be my secretary, but she refuses. She's not, so, a, she's not close by, is she? Nah. She's not okay. Um, she refuses. And um, so I use Adobe to document everything once again. So emails are time, uh, time stamped, um, and I feel comfortable. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not telling anybody to do this. I'm saying I feel comfortable going into court, dealing with a judge, and say, look, Your Honor, here's the time stamp from Adobe. Here's when the email was open. Here's when the contract was signed from this location and this IP address. Now, it's up to them to prove that I'm lying. It's not up to me. Right. right? They have to prove, no, that's not my IP was hacked, and... I right. keep my emails, I categorize everything, I organize everything, but I've never had to go to court. I've never had a client stiff me. Right. Um, because you're doing your homework up, up front. You're doing the hard, yeah. you're sifting for the best yeah. fish. Um, to use a analogy. Listen, there are three people who thumbs down 
this podcast to those people. I know who you are. You're some publisher. You're hating on me right now. You're hating on Will Terry. I know who you are. Well, you know what? They, life hasn't always treated them perfectly, so we got to give them That's a break. Right. You know? That's right. I don't give breaks, Will. <laughs> I come after people while they're sleeping. <laughs> okay, man. So, uh, okay, we got the contract stuff in there. I think we got. I think we covered that. I know we're going to leave stuff out, but again, if you guys could put it in the comments, and then maybe uh, we can we can answer some. You, you want to you want to do some questions, Will? I'm looking at them. You want to do some questions? If you think they fit in, because I still have a few things that I got that we got to get to. So you tell me. Let's do one. Let's do one because okay. I told Castle that I would ask his question. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, oh, man. This is terrible. <laughs> okay. So Eric Draws says, for some reason, he's calling me Charlie. I think that's Bruh. Eric Castleman. Uh, it says it may be, but he says Eric Draws. He says Charlie B. I'm not Charlie. Charlie's the other dude. <laughs> that's not that's me. The good looking one. No, he's not the good looking one. He's got really <laughs> thick glasses, dude's hairs. Anyway, okay. The nice one. He says, Can I be more how can I be more social and interact more face to face with people? I really want to be less awkward. Um, you know, I talked about that a little bit ago, but it's really just accepting who you are as an artist. You can still grow, you can still sign up for Will Terry's SVS, learn. You can still become a better artist. Did you like that, Will? How I slipped that in there? Did that for the kids, Will. Huh? I'm good like that. That's why you keep bringing me on. But you can still learn to be a better artist, but you have to accept who you are as an artist. Like, I can never be Will Terry. Will Terry will be Will Terry. I could be a poor man's Will Terry. But here's the good news. Will Terry can never be me. So the people who like my work will like my work. They might not like Will's work. Yep. And so I don't... I don't get wrapped up in that. If they want to hire me, they're going to hire me so I can be confident in that. And if they don't, they don't. But I've also been a guy who sat at a comic convention, twiddling my thumbs, feeling super embarrassed. And then I started taking notes and figured out what is it that I'm doing wrong? One, I don't have a product here. That was my first mistake, right? So that's why it was hard for me to speak. I was, I was doing things wrong. I was stupid. So I was embarrassed and that's why I didn't have confidence. So I started to jot down, okay, I need to bring this. I need to do that. I need to network more. I need to have somebody else work so I can walk around and talk to other people at the booth so I can make friends. I started to figure out what I was doing wrong, and that started to help me with confidence, even with talking to clients. What am I doing wrong? How did I not sell that idea? Or why did that contract fall through? I was too slow. I made the client wait too long. Here's a true story. This just happened in Chicago uh, on Sunday. I was doing a book fair. And this is the first book fair where I had a bunch of different authors who work, I worked with. I had their books on my table. And I was making a killing. It was going great. <laughs> and so I looked across, and everybody else had like money cases, you know, those little 10 security things. And like a knucklehead, I'm putting money in my wallet. Right? <laughs> like, I, it's the stupidest thing ever. But listen, I learned from that mistake. So a lady comes up with her family, she wants to buy my books. I don't have change. She was so turned off. She walked away. My assistant, he's walking to get change all, all at the same time. And so I start to take notes. Always have change. Have a money purse. Have your assistant run to get change if you need it, right? Because I realized I made a mistake. And then I said, pursue her. So when he came back, I went and found her. I said, hey, I got the change. Would you still buy the book? Oh, I'll be back later. She was so turned off by my unprofessionalism that I lost a customer. Mm -hmm. Now, I could be embarrassed and lose all of my confidence, or I could say, that thing will never happen again as long as yeah. I can control it. So as you begin to prepare, you don't make the same mistakes. When you don't make the same mistakes, you start to build your confidence. You become more of a professional. You know more than what you knew before. And now you feel like you can talk to people in a way that they can hear the confidence through you. So that's the answer, Eric. I hope that helped you out. And another thing I might add, that was a great answer. Another thing I might add to that is the better your work gets, the more confidence you're going to automatically have yeah. because you're going to get uh, so much praise that you're going to start to realize that you do have a lot to offer the world. And once you realize that you have a lot to offer the world, then the person who, who is trying to manipulate you or take advantage of you doesn't mean as much to you anymore and you can you can afford to be a little bit more i think it's like a natural process so i mean i was a very inconfident person 
going through junior high and high school, you know, I'm a very different person today than I was back then. Um, even in college, I wasn't a very confident person. I started gaining my confidence as my, as I started working and put my nose down and, and just working really hard. And again, coming from behind in, in the, in the pack of, uh, Artists in my yeah. college, yeah. I mean, yeah. like I was on academic, uh, not academic. Well, I was on academic probation, but I was also on probation in the program, and that hurt. I mean, that really knocked me back. I was like, because I thought, I thought I was pretty good. I thought I was hanging, but apparently my teachers didn't. <laughs> and you know, getting put on notice, that that was like it was sink or swim. And I was like, because I had done. <laughs> story time again, but I had done the, the uh, carpenter's helper. I, I was out there slugging tools around in the winter and in the hot heat of the summer. And I was like, this is not for me. And when I got put on academic probation, it was like, it was like, I could see the movie of my life changing back to slugging, you know, putting, mm -hmm. putting shingles on a roof in the winter time. And I was like, no, nah, I, I can't do that. I gotta, I gotta work really hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Sometimes failure, um, catapults us to success where we have to stop and it's okay to fail it's okay to fail uh carrie uh, 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 they're asking a question if you yeah. can retype castle's question i'll try to answer it i can't see it anymore for some reason i can't scroll up so if you can retype it i'll try to answer it castle man yeah oh he had another one yeah i mi i missed it i couldn't find it while they're doing that let me ask you this and this sure. is this one's from mirka and she emailed me directly and and she said she was asked to illustrate a picture book by an author who plans to self-publish. Even if they have the budget to pay me a decent wage, I'm not sure if I should take the job. I do have an agent who is working to place my current author illustrated dummies, but who would not be a part of this job with the self-publishing author. Uh, I am tempted to do it, get practice from it uh, for the port potential portfolio pieces and for the money, <clears throat> but I'm worried that it will then hinder my chances of getting work where I really want to. And that's from traditional publishing houses. Will they look down on it? Uh, I can do the contracts, manage copyright and all that. But since the industry is small and where it gets around, I don't want to start my career with bad, a bad stigma to my name. And I, I want to answer this first, if it's okay, but I, I, to, to, for me, I would say absolutely not. This is, this will never hurt your career. Uh, other people might disagree with me, but I I really feel strongly that the the people in uh, in the publishing houses they have no idea what's going on in self publishing. Well, number one, it doesn't come across their desk. In they have subscriptions to, and I should know the name of these, and I apologize, but they they pay a lot of money for subscriptions to databases of all the books and how they're performing out there. Mm -hmm. And if your if your book is self published. Uh, in it probably won't be on that list unless other things happen and it gets picked up picked up by a publisher right um, so yeah. they're they're just not gonna know about it um and even if they did big deal it's like they understand that you're coming from somewhere that you're that you're doing different things and but in their world they just don't care they they've got too many things to worry about other than like wait a minute that artist, I remember they worked on a self, you know, number one, it doesn't, it doesn't even register. The thing that matters to them is your, um, your track record, your sales history, which they'll pull up. And it's actually a good thing if you don't have a sales history, because it's like a credit score. If you, I know we've talked about this before, but if you, if you um, get paid, let's say you get paid a $20,000 advance to do a children's book by a publisher and your book only earns um enough to where it would have paid you half of that back right where they earned enough uh it's a kind of a complicated accounting system but let's say the book did half as well as projected then that negative or that uh deficiency goes on your record if your book does better or does what it was supposed to do or better then that also goes on your record and then that's a good credit score if you haven't ever done a book with them or with a, a publisher then you have zero score and they can easily sell you in a meeting in a sales meeting if you have a zero score if you don't you know if you don't have a bad credit score but you you have no credit score so in long story short that's my answer now what do you think tires well i i agree with you um as far as you know ruining your rep because you went independent 
I don't think they care. What they care about is if they look at your artwork, the artwork is good, it's done well, it stands out, they're going to hire you based on that primarily. Not, um, you know, now if you're putting out crap and you have a portfolio of crap because you're just kind of working with independent authors and just throwing things together, well, that's going to hurt you more than anything. That's a really good point. Yeah. But you have to treat, and then this is the hard part. Uh, you're If you're getting paid, you know, three or four thousand dollars to do a self published book, it's really on the low end. Maybe it's only two thousand dollars, depending on where you live. That could be really good money. But if you're only getting paid, you know, a few thousand dollars to do a children's book, you have to treat it like you're getting twenty thousand. You do. That's you, the hard part. You do. Yeah. And you have to somehow be able to afford it because the the editor the editors that you're worried about that might you you say well will it hurt my chances to to work with a big publisher only if it's if they somehow come across it and it's really bad work then yes it could hurt you um the other thing now you say you do have an agent and again i'm talking to mirka mm -hmm. and i hope i'm saying her name right mirka or mirka uh, but um you say you have an agent it's possible agents um, sometimes, depending on their relationship with you, they, um, you know, some of them feel like they're in a real strong partnership and they really want to try to uh, uh, drive your career into good waters. And they might, it might actually be a strain if they feel like you're doing these other things instead of writing. What they want you doing is writing. And I'm assuming an agent. Usually the word agent is used for a uh, publishing agent for writers or writers who also illustrate. And if you're, it, the only way I could see it damaging your relationship with your agent is if they feel like you're not sending them new manuscripts that they can send out and that your time is too divided. But to me, any agent that's worth their, you know, salt. anything, yeah, the salt would, they, they have to understand that you also need to eat and live and, you know, that you're, that you're taking that because you probably don't have a book deal, um, uh, through them. So the, in my mind, it shouldn't hurt your relationship, but you know, Oh, I mean, any, you know, each person is, a, is their own individual and they make their own individual decisions, but does it matter? So yeah. I mean, the real question is, are you going to starve to death in hopes that a publisher will come by? Or if you have an opportunity to make a quarter of what you would make with a huge publishing house, versus not making anything at all, what would you choose? To right. me, that's a no brainer. I'm going to make the money and I want to do well. And then I want to reach out to other publishing houses, to other agents and keep going. I'm never going to stop and say, well, hopefully I'll just starve for the next two years and then someone <laughs> will come and hire me. That's, I, I mean, maybe if you're 19, you can do that. You know, um, maybe if you're 19, you, sh you can do that. But in my opinion, I'm going to take the work and do it, do it well. And if some agent has a problem with that, then they have a problem with it because some agents would have a problem with you going four years without producing a book. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there is no perfect answer. So I'd rather make money than to sit around and, you know, not have anything to show for the last couple of years. Or I would say if you, if you are going to take the approach of not wanting to offend a publishing house, then work on your own book, Yeah. work on your own things, make sure that you're making beautiful artwork if you can afford to do that but most artists can't most of us have to make a living we have to make money so it's a it's a no-brainer to me yeah yep it's a no-brainer to me so that's a good one um uh, now i have a few more questions but are there some that you want to work in from the chat yeah i got i got i got, I got a couple because castle i killed him on ask his question okay so he wrote well having a rep calls issues if i decided we are you already got that so we're good uh, okay. Bo Dico, Bo Dico, do nothing you are not proud of, but in the beginning, stuff is not as good, not as good as later. So you have to be paid. I think I know what he's saying. He's saying, in the beginning, your work isn't very good. Yeah. So what do you do? Well, so you should be growing as an artist, right? So it's okay. Like, if I look at my work from years ago, I'm embarrassed. I mean, under the table, embarrassed. When mm -hmm. I look at the stuff I'm doing now, I feel like this is great. In two years, I'm going to hate everything I did today, right? I'm going to absolutely hate it and say, oh, you know, I really don't know what I was thinking then. But that's the evolution of an artist. So yeah. if I work on something tonight when I wake up in the morning 
it shouldn't be as great as it was when I went to bed. Yep. Right. So it's okay to grow. It's okay to not have perfect artwork. My, my first book, I don't even count it because I, I did it as a senior project, uh, uh, for my, at my, at college, I had a, a small publisher, a local publisher. Um, they had a few manuscripts that came in and they, they reviewed portfolios and they're at the college. They looked at our stuff and then they, they said, well, we're going to, we're going to hopefully find an illustrator or two to work on these things. So I got paid to do my senior project mm -hmm. a couple thousand, it was $2,000 to do the book. And I thought, well, that's really low, but I get credit for my senior project as well for my BFA. So it was, it was a no, you know, I was like, well, I'm going to take this thing. And it, it was, it's horrible. Um, the, I couldn't hold a character. So my, my lead girl, the, the main character in the book, looks different on almost every page it's, it's it's embarrassing and to the point where when i was working on it you know they came back to me on a couple of them and were like look and in, in a really nice way <laughs> like i mean we call they, that we, <laughs> we call that failing forward though well exactly and if you didn't fail then you would have failed later so now That's imagine right. if someone hired you and you failed at that point. That's way right. worse, right? Right. And so we want to get all the failure we can out of us every day. It's just like doing push-ups. You yep. do if you want to be, you say, hey man, I want to be able to do 200 push-ups. You got to start failing at 45. Then you got to fail right. at 65. Then you fail at 85. I mean, you have to push your muscles to exhaustion, but you're getting stronger. Well, it's the same with being an artist. You have to fail. It's okay to say, man, I don't, I can only do 20 push-ups like six months ago, man. <laughs> but now I'm at 40. Well, look, you failed forward. And it's the same in art. It's okay, man. Like, you know, you're not going to always, you're not going to do your best work now. Your best work will be done when you retire or when you die. Yep. So just get used to it and just understand yeah. that if you're not hating the stuff you did last year or the year before, then you're not growing. And that's more scary to me than anything else. You know, so. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's absolutely. Scary. And that's true with everything. Yeah. You know, even if you think you're staying still, you're going backwards because the world keeps moving, right? Right. Okay, so going back to the self-published books, who we, we're kind of going through this journey of, you know, you're, you're contacting or the, the author's contacting you, your communication with them. Then we get to the contract. Then we get to your, your, you know, they've already written the story and you're doing artwork. How do you then, when you're done, uh, you, I'm assuming that you send them sketches. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Continue. <laughs> no, I do. I'm just kidding. I'm not that big of a jerk. Wow. <laughs> I, I send over in processes. I send over thumbnails, sketches. We do it all. We do it okay. all. We do it all. All right. Yeah. So you, you, you're working with, um, um, you know, and I have had a lot of students say, you know, well, they want me to make all these changes. And I, and now it's getting to the point where I just don't even know. I mean, we could talk about changes for an hour. Mm -hmm. uh but we don't have that that kind of time because there's there's more to get to and uh, I, I got some real gold for you right now Will. Me, this is me, the area i love listen to this take me into the mine because in this case as an independent project and you don't have a director you don't have a project director you don't have a lead it's just you and the author guess who's the expert you so yeah. if the changes are unreasonable guess who's not making them Okay, right? so so let's let's go through. Let's do some role playing. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. What kind of role playing? <laughs> you got your pants on, right? I don't. But continue. Oh, all right. All right. Careful. Okay. So I'm the author, and um, I'm I'm calling you up because I got the sketches, and while I like most of them, I you know I got these changes to make, and and the girl, the the lead girl. What's her name, Penny, with the Penny, yeah. mm -hmm, sure. mm -hmm. She doesn't look like the girl I was picturing. Like, I wanted this to look like my granddaughter. Oh, and great. We talked about great. that. <laughs> great, yeah. So she doesn't yeah. look exactly like my granddaughter, and uh, I need you to redraw that. Sure. So <laughs> this is why the contract is so important. I addressed this in the very beginning, and I'm telling anyone oh, who's sure. considering this, you address this in the beginning because I, let's. this is a big deal. So let's break this down. Well, I can't run through this because this is so important. Right. And let me tell you why. When grandma sees her grandchild, 
It is not what you see when you see her grandchild. That's right. So trying to capture the vision that she has in her head of her grandchild is almost impossible to do for a book. It's possible to do for a painting. Here's why. A painting is one pose where they send you a bunch of pictures and you work on that, right? A picture book or children's book or storybook is different poses interacting with other people in new environments. There's so many things you can't control. And so she'll say, well, when my daughter's outside and my granddaughter's outside in the sun, she looks like this. But when she's in the house, she looks more like this. And, and it, it, the number, it becomes an infinity of changes that you can't control. Right. So initially I say one, if you want me to do human characters that look like your child, I am going to charge you a lot more. Mm. But I can tell your story and I can use likeness from that kid in the story of the character so that the two can relate. By the way, your cute grandchild will never sell a book. My characters will. Why? Because I know <laughs> how to sell characters in books. I've been doing this for 18 years, mm -hmm. right? So this is where my expertise comes in. I said, now you hired me, so you have to trust me. I'm not interested in drawing your grandchild 32 times. That's not what you're hiring me for. You're hiring me to do a picture book. And oh, by the way, I'm the professional. So this is where I get to tell you how this should go. Now, now once again, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, have you ever had that happen? Because I have. Yes, of course. Okay. Then have you ever had um, where uh, you had to tell them, like, look, I'm just not going to do that. And then what was the reaction? What? I'm just giving you this awkward silence like I give them. <laughs> so how can sorry. I help you? I'm yeah. sorry. What was what was the question? No, so look, the reality is is you have to say, I'm the but I do this at the beginning. And when I didn't do it, well then I was in trouble, right? And so if you're slick enough, you can talk your way out of it and say, look, that's not that's not what makes a book great. Your right. child or the character looking like your child is not what this is about. And you, you're adding you're adding something else that doesn't matter at all. And it you doesn't have to matter. Educate them. Right. Like no one else cares that this looks like your granddaughter. Because they've never you, seen your grandchild. Right. And you have this idea right. of what illustrators do that's false. Mm -hmm. you just don't do that. Right. Right. Like right. there's no books out there. I mean, I mean, you could put a dog, you know, you can illustrate a dog that's a I, I put one of the author's dogs in, but it, was, it wasn't the main character uh, just because they sent a picture. And I, I, actually, <clears throat> I actually facilitated that in Santa Pups. I, I said, uh, hey, can I put my dog in there, you know, and tell the author he could put his in there too and I'll mm -hmm. paint his in there just so I could sure. make sure that I got mine in there and the, and the uh, editor thought that, that was a great idea. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like... Yeah, that, that was just a curveball that I wanted to throw out there because I know that, that you're getting asked to do stupid stuff like that. That's a super important question, though. And, and that's something you want to, especially independently, you know, you have to take control of what it is you're doing. Right. Because no matter how high you raise the bar, the author will come back and try to raise it higher. Right. And so you have to take control. Otherwise, things just get crazy. Now, I have done this before with low, with, uh, projects similar to what you're you're doing where i'm working with an individual on a project like for instance i i did this uh image for this guy's uh marathon and he he runs a marathon and he needed uh some artwork for it and i said and he and he's a friend and uh you know and he offered to pay and everything and there was no problem there but i told him look i and it was it's hard to have this conversation because it's it's like you said earlier I don't want to sound arrogant, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to sound, I don't, I don't want to come across making, putting this in the wrong light, but let's, I really want you to understand that you came to me and I don't need this job and I don't need this money. So for, for it to work, because this isn't what I normally do. Right. I'm the art director and the illustrator, meaning I'm, what I'm going to do for the, for half up front, is I'm going to design this thing and I'll, I'll share the sketch with you, but I'm not doing, I'm not starting over and I'm not redoing. I'm giving you the best thing that I think 
I can do based on our conversation and everything we've talked about. If you have another idea or input, I will definitely consider it because you might make it better. But if I don't like it, I'm still going to go with this. And your, right. your choice yeah. is to forfeit Absolutely. half of the money and find someone else or to just go through with it and pay me the rest. You say it so nicely, Will. You're such a nice guy. I mean, <laughs> no. You make me feel like a monster no. with the way I describe my interaction with a client. Well, I'm like, always Listen, worried. You do it my way or else. You know, that I'm always mystery. worried because they're a friend, and you know, and I'm like, and I don't want to come off. I don't want to, you know, people to say that Will Terry, you know, but it's like r really, like I'm not asking you to come over and build me a fence for for this really low price, and I'm not asking you to 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 treat my kids and give them braces, you know. Well, how do we start talking about building fences and making well, America free? What, I, what I'm saying is, you know what I'm saying is like yeah, I, I don't yeah, want to, I don't want to, I don't want to come off as a jerk, but at the same time, I don't want to, I don't want to be redoing something that I know is bad design just because right. they're asking for it because it reflects yeah. on me. I don't want of course. to see this thing, and so yeah. I one of my suggestions for people doing self-published books would be to say. You're, you know, you're not going to like this as the author, but I, I'm going to give you my best effort, my best drawings, and you can you can give me comments. But there's good comments and there's bad comments and there's mm -hmm. comments that don't matter at all. Or they only matter to you, and I'm going to be the one to decide. And that's going to kill it for a lot of jobs, probably. Sure, there's probably a lot of authors that aren't going to be willing to. Work under those situations. you'd be surprised how people respond when you actually say and and i'm not going to use the perfect words but just to get it out there you're the author you write i'm the artist let me draw right you'd be surprised and i'll tell you one thing that i want everybody to be careful of when people start talking about creating art by committee meaning so an author will say well me and my family or me and my friends or me and my group of people whatever they are think it should be this way you have to very aggressively stop that immediately because when has art ever been great by committee? Ever. Yep. Right. Like Caravaggio. So, did, did Caravaggio, did he consult a committee on every painting right. that he did? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so once you do that, it's no longer art. It's a survey, and now you're producing clip art. Right. So, well, the author didn't consult you on the story. That's right. I didn't, I didn't have a group of people to say, hey, we, you know, right. I can give an opinion about the story. And if you say, well, I want to keep it that way. Okay. That's up to you. That's great. Yeah. That's fine. I either work with you or I don't. Right. And by the way, do you, do you do that every now and then? Do what every now and then? Opinions on the story. Oh, of course. Yeah. I'll, I'll say, because I've done so many books, I'll say, well, you know, this is not the reading level that I think you want it to be, or we don't have to add this because the art tells that story. Right. Uh, sometimes someone can, you know, look, especially when people are just starting out, they think about how they read adult books and they put all of the details in their stories. Yeah. And I say to them, this is why you're paying me. You want to just give the bones and I put the meat into the book. Right. Once again, I'm the magic man. You can't <laughs> let me make magic for you. The magic right? man. Yeah. Like and that. so when you say that, but when you talk to them, they go, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. They're oftentimes happy. Or if you say grammatically, this doesn't work. Now, as an artist, I don't really handle that. I have a team that grammatically looks over books and says, blah, 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 right? right. Uh, one of the best things independent artists can do, don't try to be that person at all. Yeah. Get somebody who is that person to but work you, with you. Do you hire or does yeah. the author ever hire an editor? No, I, I keep it because they'll hire their sister or brother. Oh, or gotcha. cousin, right. You have to have a person who you trust, who knows what they're doing. And who, who doesn't have uh, an emotional uh, attachment to the book, to the right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or and also, who hasn't read it five or six times, where they, right. their eyes are skipping over the mistakes. You want to get into a very critical person who focuses. Their focus is to find mistakes, right? And then let them work. And so you include that. By the way, you include that in your pricing. So whatever they charge, if they say 150 per book to proof, then you add 150 into your book pricing. Yeah. Because you don't want to pay that price. That's not something you. Should I love pay. that you take control because that was a big. That was a lot of the questions that I had in this whole thing. Is you know, and uh, I did a video a few years back on 
why I won't illustrate your self-published book. And it was basically, I saw that I was hurt. Were you really? Well, hurt. it was, it was geared towards that person that you would turn down. No excuses. Will yeah, no, unacceptable, I'm not excuse. unacceptable you're, behavior. You're to the, uh, the people that you discard so heartlessly. Oh, well, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but, but in there, one of the things that I, that I talked about was, um, when you when you sign up to do this with someone else and you guys sign that contract the 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 basically the last question i had and we can get to more questions from if there if there are more in the comments section in the you guys are alive in the comments section are they They're asking me questions so fast i can't watch well. right now. so um but the one question that i would have is who controls the quality of the actual production the printing the graphic design all that good stuff and that's that was one thing that always scared me is like, okay, so you wrote a really good story. I know I can make really good art, but to make a really good book is there's a lot more to it. There's the editing, there's the graphic design, mm -hmm. and then there's the the bookmaking, the actual like printer that you choose to work with and sure. all those all those things. So do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So if 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 you can't afford it, then you have to be all of those things. That's the reality, right? If you can't afford it, and this is your first rodeo, second, third, look, you're trying to you're trying to build something, you're trying to build a portfolio, you're trying to make a living, then you do what you have to do. But if you get to the place where you can build a team, so you find a person who really likes to do cover work, and you work with that person, you'll figure out a price. Say, hey man, look, I'd, I'd like for you to do covers for me, uh, or even just the fonts, the graphics, or whatever, and let's 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 agree to a deal. And every time I get a book, I'll hire you. You'll work with me. Same thing with an editor. And then you find someone who you really respect, like art-wise, and you say, you know, when I'm done with a book, I'd like for you to proof it. I'd like for you to look over. And Will, when we first met, I had you do that for me, mm -hmm. right? I, hey, Will, check this out. What do you think, right? Um, and you gave me great feedback. You're like, you know, I don't like this style, and I think I want you to soften this up. Those comments were great for me, and it helped my book, right? It helped the next book and the mm -hmm. next book. But you have to be smart enough to build a team around you to help you make a great book when you can. If you can't afford it, it's okay. Do what you got to do. Meaning, take the time out. There's software you can buy that will help you. Um, get fresh eyes. Get friends who you trust, who are professionals. Not mom and dad. Not your uncle who lives in a barn in the back. He's useless. Professional people mm -hmm. who know what they're talking about and listen to them. Don't allow your client to do it. You build your own team. And once you can pay for a team, once you can consistently give them work, then you just keep them. You keep working with them and then you'll have two and three editors you'll have four or five graphic designers that you can pick from and you just keep building but it's okay to start off as a one man a one woman show that's absolutely okay those those words from jake parker come to mind finish not perfect yeah uh, yeah because it, perfect is paralyzing and if you if you if you fret over it uh it might never not ever get done and the lesson the lessons are like being withheld. They're sitting out there waiting to, to hit your mind, but you got to get through the process to allow like the aftermath to kind of hit. You do, you right. learn those things. So, um, yeah, so that's really important. So do you, um, do you do a lot of back and forth with printers? Do you have, um, you like to work with? Yes and no, it depends. So if, if it's a quick project and it's a quick turnaround and I don't have time to do the back and forth, then I don't. And the client says, I love it. This works for me. I have to accept that. It, it's I have to get the project done. But other people are saying, hey, I want the book to look like this. Let's look at the proof. Send the proof back. Let's try this. Let's try gloss, matte, 60 pound. And we try these different things. Uh, when there's time and when the client is interested in that, absolutely. I'd love to do that. But oftentimes they don't care. What they want to do is produce a book to mm -hmm. sell not a book to look pretty on shelves or win awards. They want to produce a book to sell. And then their second or third book, they may try something different. Uh, they may say, you know, I saw a print in the store. I went into Barnes and Nobles. Can you check this book out? I get up, I go to Barnes and Noble, I buy the book. Oh yeah, I know what this is. I know how they did that. Oh, that's a jacket. You want a jacket on your book? Okay. Then I go and get the price quote and then say, okay, if you want a copy that you want to, you want to test it out it's $200 or whatever the price is. Mm. Uh, then I have it built. I have it sent to them. I have a copy sent to me. Um, I start to store it in my collection, right? So now in the future, I can pull something out and say, hey, take a look at this. 
buy mm -hmm. this book and see if you like this. So it's just an ongoing process. Ultimately, if the client is interested in getting the perfect book, then I'm interested in it. But more likely than not, they aren't. They want a book that looks like a book, that acts like a book, that works like a book. And that's it. Okay. That's so, a, yeah. It's usually something a publisher focuses on when, right. you know, the perfect size and yeah, All you don't get that luxury right. often. Right, right. So then do you, um, do you find it pretty easy to talk to printers as far as like, you know, you, you, you call them up? Uh, I'm assuming, you know, some people are thinking about doing this. I mean, are they helpful when you call them up or do they act like they don't even know what you're, what you want? Well, okay. So that's a good question. Once you start, they don't really care about you, but when you're consistent and you keep bringing books, you know, every month or every other month to print, you have a person you talk to, now you can build that relationship. So if you use a place like Create Space and Amazon, those, no. Oh. But <laughs> there are mm -hmm. other places where you can, you can actually talk to them. They'll make adjustments for you. They'll make exceptions for you. Oh, no problem. But you want to build that relationship. It's not something because it's your first book and you just want to get it done. They, mm -hmm. It usually doesn't work that way. Nightmare companies, not, no, CreateSpace isn't a nightmare company, but they just don't care. You're mm. going to follow their rules down to the wire. Mm. Uh, if you're off one quarter of a centimeter, they will not give you a pass. They will, You have to change everything. Um, sometimes, and then other times, they'll let you upload it and they'll give you thumbs up. It's the weirdest thing in the world. But mm. once you understand, once you've done a couple of books with them, then you write down specifics. Boom, rip one off, right? I know exactly what they want. <laughs> and if it's another size book, I go, Room. this is exactly what they want. <laughs> right. And I keep those things and I also type them out. I'm not a barbarian, but I keep the stickies <laughs> right up top so I can rip them down. I have to look through my computer. Mm -hmm. um, so the printer relationship can happen if you're using a medium to small size printer co printing company. So there's a company in Chicago that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another company in China that I'm pretty impressed with. I don't get to use them as often as I like, but I feel what's like- the, What's the name? I can't tell you that one. Oh, okay, sorry, sources. What, what do you think this is? <laughs> um, let me let me just say this. I had a friend once who, who published a book and he, he contacted the printer and he said, look, I don't know what I'm doing. This is the first book that I'm producing, but I'm working with an artist and I'm working with a graphic designer. We're gonna supply you with all the the files and everything to print from. Mm -hmm. and so you'll be working with them. He yeah. kind of got it going, but he said, look, I, I want to get the best quote possible. Um, I, you know, I, I need you to help, help me help you get this book done, but I, I won't be able to do it if it costs too much. So, you know, and so anyway, long story short, what happened was, you know, he, he, he basically told this guy, I want to save money, but he gave them the, the size of book that he wanted. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, he pulled the size of the book out of his out of his head. You know, I mean, like he, mm -hmm. he just he just came up with this this size because it's it felt right. Right. Well, it was a half inch too big to fit four up on the sheet, so they were only able to run two up on the sheet. Two, and that means two they could print two, basically two pages of the book each time on one sheet of paper because the paper's big. But it wasn't quite big enough to print four up and utilize the whole sheet. So there was a ton of paper getting trimmed and wasted. Mm -hmm. And they had to print twice as many of the large sheets because they only got two up instead of four. Right. So yeah. anyway, long story short, he he gets his books. The books ended up costing like five or six bucks a book. Mm -hmm. And these weren't children's books. This was another type of book. And then later on, uh, he went into the printer and another person at the printer was like, "Oh, if you had just made it a half inch shorter, uh, it would have saved you. It, you would have you would have paid about uh, a third less mm -hmm. money." And yeah. he was so upset because it was thousands of dollars. And so the lesson from that is, you got to yank it out of the printer and like, "Look, I'm going to come over there and kill you if you don't help me help. You know, like make me this work. I'm just a person over here trying to." trying to eke out a living. I don't yeah. have extra money. Like, tell me what size to make it. I think that's one of the most important questions you can ask a printer. Yeah, so it's it's essentially this, Will. It's, it's not that complicated. It's knowing your craft. 
And um, Jim just wrote, he wrote, I'm an artist. Or, or Dan, I'm sorry, Dan wrote, I'm not a businessman either. So I need to invest in my entrepreneurial tendencies until I can build a trust with one who gets both both paid, gets us both paid. And that's correct. Jim, you hit it right on the head. So Jim, uh, I'm sorry, not Jim, Dan, you hit it right on the head. Jim was asking a question. He says, hey, I'm an artist. That's not my strength. But you have to grow and you have to learn because it wasn't my strength either. Until I decided, hey, I want to make a living doing this and live well, I had to learn things. So I had to learn how to print a book. I had to learn how to put the pages together. Um, there are people who can do it better. That's great. But I still had to learn for myself. Now, one day, I'll be able to hire someone who only does that. But until that day, I have to learn it, and I have to learn it well. <clears throat> now, here's the bonus. When I go out to hire someone in the future who, to do it for me, <clears throat> I'll know enough to hire the right person. Um, right. I had someone tell me this when I was hiring an accountant. She's like, listen, you have to learn to manage your money, too. Because if you trust me with everything, I'll rob you blind. And she <laughs> meant that metaphorically, of course. But she's saying, you have to know enough about your finances that if something's off, you go, hey, something's off. Right. If you don't know anything about it, I can do whatever I want and you wouldn't know it. It's the same with publishing, printing books. That's a good point. Yeah. The more you know, like, Will, what you just said, that example you just gave, the better off you're going to be. Oh, okay. So me selecting an arbitrary size can cost me thousands of dollars. Guess what? Everybody who's paying attention, all 83 of them just learned that. <laughs> See, yep. so we have to master our craft. And even if you're working for a, a publisher, you then know to design the pages a certain way so you don't look like a knucklehead. I can't just draw them anywhere I want. I can't just do whatever I want to do. Right. There's a, um, there are procedures and steps that are expected of me. So now I'm more professional as an artist. There you Gems. go. There you go. Gems. That's all I have, man. That I think you covered it. Like all the things that I was thinking about with self-publishing i mean there's there was the question by lily who where she's asking uh about kindle do, do you get into that in your contracts at all like if they want a digital oh that's a good question well so it depends right i would say in the contract include a cost for that or it or if that's a separate contract because you don't want to get in the habit of redesigning books for free unless that's a giveaway. If you want to add, hey, here's why you want to choose me. I'll put it on Kindle for you. Right. Now right. it's a selling point. Remember, you know, we want to do whatever we can that's reasonable to seal the deal, but we don't want to extend ourselves where we're wasting time and losing money. Right. So the Kindle process, once you learn it, you have to actually learn it, is not too complicated. Do you do it? Do you do that? I have. I have. I've done it twice. It's not that complicated. Um, so I would say, if you were trying to sell a deal, I'd say, hey, and I put it on Kindle, or I'll wow. put it in the Apple store or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Because now you're doing something that they don't know how to do, and they don't know how, they you don't want to became, take the time to learn. You became a lot more valuable to them. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that becomes a selling point. Yeah. Interesting. I would make sure that you cover it in your contract, and if you're not doing it, you could say in the contract something to the effect of, and again, I'm not an attorney, so this is not legal advice, but I would say I would include something in there that says that if it does get put on Kindle, you get a cut and what that percentage would be. Because let's say crazy, you know, crazier things have happened. Well, let's say a big publisher picks up this book and it's not specified out, then you might have inadvertently given your rights away. And it could do really well, and it, they could be selling a lot of copies, and you're kind of cut out of that deal. So it should be addressed. Um, so when you're dealing with independent authors, here's the kicker. 95% of them won't be the books that are making a lot of royalties. That's, that's Right, and that's a good point. And I, what I'm getting at, because you mentioned that before, mm -hmm. and I want you to continue on that, but I, what I'm, all I'm saying is, like, we need to renegotiate. If you decide to do this on Kindle, we need to figure out a fee or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're you're absolutely right on the on the royalties. It is a very complicated thing to keep track of them, and it's also a trust issue because you're not going to be seeing theoretically you can't all see the numbers. You're not going to see right. the numbers, and so yeah. And 
I'll, I'll give I'll throw a couple examples out there where I actually made a lot more money um, getting a flat fee. I did, a, I did this uh, game for Hasbro and it was called 1313 dead end drive. And I'm like, this is a game, you know, this is a game for Hasbro. This is a board game. This could mm-hmm. be, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, this could be Clue. In fact, they said it's this is a game that we're hoping will replace Clue because Clue, you know, it's not going to last forever. Right. And maybe the p- people that like playing that are going to play this. And so in my mind, I'm like, this is going to be in everybody's house around the, the world, you know. And and so I need to get a royalty on this thing. And, and we fought forever to get a royalty. Well, long story short, they fi- it finally came down where they're like, look, we're not getting, we're not doing a royalty. We don't do royalties anymore um and take it or leave it the flat fee. Right. Mm-hmm. but we negotiated the flat fee up to double what they were offering because they weren't willing to give a royalty Royalties, right yeah. well that book was in walmart for a year or two something like that and then it just it was a dumb game it's stupid it's it's too hard to set up it takes forever and i made way more in the flat fee than I ever would in royalties. Mm -hmm. And I I had a book that way too, where they paid really high advance and no royalties. And it was gone after a year. And I made, I made out like a bandit on the flat fee. So don't, the, the, the thing about royalties is you've got to be, if you, if I, for me, if an artist ever wants to make a a really big chunk of money, if you ever want to just sail into the sunset, and you know be one of those few artists that that just killed it it's usually going to be because you either own the ip or you own a piece of the ip right okay so royalty you should be thinking royalty but with self-published authors i probably wouldn't worry about that because chances are you're going to do better in just getting a a good flat advance fee you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i i agree with that but usually in this genre of work for artists that's it, it, one, if it is an option, how do you manage it? Meaning, you can write it in a contract. Most, more than likely, you're going to scare off an independent author because they don't have a way of doing it. They don't. They don't know how to do it. Right. Usually, if someone's coming to you to do this, they have no idea. Unless you have a system that's set up, then it's pretty impossible for them to keep up. But you could do this. You could say, "Okay, I'm in charge of shipping all the books out." So even when the author owns orders books, who owns the books, they then have to order it through you. But that becomes really complicated. And who would give you that much power? Yeah. Because then you become their publisher. Right. And why would they do that? Right. right. You know. Yeah. So that's that. Um, yeah, I just wouldn't worry about that. And and if if you could write it somehow into the contract that if they sell the book to a publisher. Your contract has to be renegotiated. Do you have something like that? Can you talk about that at all? So, yes and yes, right? Okay. If it becomes anything other than the book, in other words, that you and I worked on, if it becomes a movie, if it becomes a television show, daddy's going to be knocking at the door. Okay. But what if it, and what if, and that's awesome, but what if a, a bigger publisher picks it up? Well, you include that in the contract. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Re, yeah, if the book is resold. Yeah. Then we renegotiate our rates, we renegotiate the percentage. And then at that point, I would say, I'd like royalties. You know? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Then it makes sense if you're working with a big publisher. Um, yeah. So, you know, there have been a lot of books that have gone through that route where they've been picked up after the fact um, by a bigger publisher and mm-hmm. everything should be renegotiated at that point, unless. Uh, it was set in the original contract that everything will stay the same, which could also happen and could be a great deal. Is but mm-hmm. the, the, hopefully the numbers are getting bigger. Okay, you got any more questions on the chat? Um, I think we got most of them. Okay. Uh, give me a second to just. Uh, if you want to peruse it a little bit, there. Uh, this has been great. I, you know, this is uh, it's something I might add that, uh, you know, if you're if you're starting out and you really want to learn a lot that you will learn a lot about the publishing industry, you'll learn a lot about the work that goes into making a book. Um, you will, you will, your artwork will get better. You'll be, there's something about going through the process of an actual job job, you know, that you're, you're, 
you're going to learn things you're just not learning when you're just working on personal pieces. You know, when you're, when you're doing fan art or when you're doing pieces for Instagram or your portfolio, sure. you're just going to learn so much more when you actually do a project. So for me, I'm very encouraging of people working with uh, independence authors like this. It's, it's something that you're working on. And even, you know, in the, in the acting industry, you'll see a lot of actors giving up some of their huge salaries to work on indie films. Indies, and, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and things like yeah. that, where, where they, what they see in it is freedom. And that's where, and that's why I say, if I were working on one, I would, that would be one thing I would demand is I would say, <clears throat> like you said, you're the author, I'm the illustrator. I I'm looking at this as building my portfolio. I'm right. not looking at this just for the money. So when you come at me with money, that's great. I need the money. But I also need the autonomy to be able to create what I want to create so that I can show this. It does me no good if you're heav heavily hand handing or if you're heavy handed on the art direction. And then I can't I don't want to show any of this stuff because it doesn't look good. And I had somebody ask me one time, well, why wouldn't you want to show it? Like because them art is art is art is art, you know, and I'm like, you don't understand. Like it has to come from my heart can't it can't be tampered with to the point where and you know and and one thing and i don't know if you do this for your for your um author clients but in like yeah you said that you educate them one thing that i've always encouraged my students to educate their their authors with is look in the in the in the in the biggest publishing houses you know random house simon schuster harper collins the art director's um they they have a they have a basically an approach of trying to keep their hands off your art okay when they hire you the attitude is we hired you for you we didn't hire the thousand the the 10,000 other artists we could have gone with right we picked right. you and mm -hmm. the reason we picked you is because we looked at your portfolio or we we worked with you in the past or whatever but it's because of your art that you're doing and so because of that the only changes we're going to make, and they don't tell you this, this is just how they act. But the only changes we're going to make are those that we feel are integral to storytelling. Mm -hmm. Or if you screwed up and you did, and you, you omitted something or you did something wrong that contradicts the story. Those are basically the only two times that they'll get involved. And they try to do that as little as possible. Now, when you're doing textbooks, children's textbooks, you get the design by committee. But in the uh, in the in the in the really nice trade books, you're getting people that are are hands off. So you should be telling your client, your author, look what you're trying to do to my art right now. The professionals that don't, know what they're doing don't even do this. Right. Not, so so you're not a professional. So why are you doing? Yeah. You don't know how this works. So that's why. And but you've got to do it in a way. You can't do it like that. You've got to. You got to go. Okay. And some, and, and I've had my students say, have, tell them to call me, you know, use me as your excuse. Say, well, my instructor, who's a children's book illustrator says, go ahead and call him and he'll tell you how it works. And I'll tell them that so that they'll leave them alone, you know? Sure. Sure. And, and the reality is, is look, if someone's changing what you do, then they're your boss and you're working specifically for them. They're your art director and you're doing what they tell you to do. So then why not just go get a job or, you know, why not just try to work for studios or publishers only, right? The, the best part about being indie as an artist is that you get to be the artist you want to be good or bad, whether your art is crappy, whether you choose terrible colors, that's the bonus of what we do, right? So the moment that you lose that, there's no point in doing this, right? There's no point. I mean, it's really pointless. You can go work at McDonald's and have someone tell you what to do. Yep. Not that there's anything wrong with all of my fry cookers out there. I love you. <laughs> Nothing wrong with working at McDonald's. Let me tell you that right now. Right. But they're so, paying They're paying for so much more. They're paying for your mind. I mean, when you're at McDonald's, you can phone it in. You can, you can zombie out and just, you know, just, you know, you're basically they're renting your body, right? Yeah. But... When someone rents your mind, they don't get to control it. Yeah, they don't, they don't get to be the puppeteer. You're yeah. you're you're in control, 
And so yeah. I, it's important to let them know that and to, to somehow, and again, it's, it's going to be hard. And maybe one of the best things that, that someone can do to, to learn the confidence of being able to talk to their, their aunt or their friend or whoever's hiring them mm -hmm. uh, is to do it the wrong way a few times and really go through the pain of it and, and go through the tears, physical tears. Cause a lot of times there really are physical tears and just anger and, and, and that feeling of, I have to work on this book, but I don't want to. It's the worst feeling in the world. It's the worst feeling in the world. You're an yeah. art. You Your art's going to be terrible. It's yeah. going to drag. You're going to fight through every single page. It, there's nothing worse than that. You're an artist. You yeah. did this to, because it's fun, and now it's not fun anymore. And the reason is because you didn't stand up for yourself, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Learn, and then on the next one, get, ang get a little bit angry and yeah. channel that, the, channel the, the other author that screwed you over. Mm -hmm. and and pretend that this next one is going to do the same thing and go look this last project i had or the last two were disasters it's going to have to be like this and this is why i'm so blunt so in the beginning of the conversation i was very blunt and you guys are like oh we're very confident well because i paid i paid enough by being uh the nice guy and and everybody's opinion you gave your blood yeah <laughs> I, I've sacrificed already, so now I'm at yeah. the point where nope, won't work, can't do it. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, man, this was great. Uh, late at night because our schedules matched up, so uh, that was awesome. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, I know that you're busy, and um, I, I hope everybody else appreciates Tyrus coming on here and doing this for us. So, thanks a lot. I'm sure there'll be more videos in the future. And uh, until then, I guess it's over and out, huh? Yeah. Hey, listen, for the people who like me, Will doesn't care about this. But you guys can reach out to me and I am me. I know I see all the courses, guys. I'm reading them. I just can't um, get to them all. I don't want to keep interrupting Will. <laughs> well, and I'm too much of a rube to know how to work the technology. Or I'm a rube. This guy's like talking to a dinosaur. It's like watching a Tyrannosaurus Rex type. It's just a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all over the screen. It's, so I've, anyway, I put a link to your uh, your your website, but if I have it wrong, I can switch it. Well, I don't know where you put that, but yeah, well, we'll figure it, that out. It'll it'll be on the video one when it appears on my channel. So after this is done, fair enough, it'll end up on my channel. But if you want to put anything more on there, or if you want to, what's your Instagram? Instagram Tigo Sketch T G O S K E T C H. You can find me there. If you write me, I'll probably reply back to you so I can answer the rest of those questions about printing and every, all of that stuff. I got you guys. You I am I am on YouTube. He says, what's my name on YouTube? I'm the guy who's talking to you on YouTube. <laughs> daddy. So, Ty Go Sketch. That's right. You call me Daddy, Eric. <laughs> um, and you guys can hit me up on YouTube. I don't really care. Any way you reach me, I'll probably reply back to you. All right? So that's oh, it cool. for me. Over and out, man. All right. Thanks, Thanks Will. Had a blast. Terrians, thank you, guys. I'll see you in the green room. Yes, sir. Wait All a right. minute. Wait a minute. What kind of green room? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody.